By the end of this video, we'll have created these dust particles that are flying around in the background, as well as these burst particles that appear underneath the player whenever he double jumps. Let's get started. To get started with our double jump particles, I'm going to create a new game object underneath our player, name these double jump particles. I'll give them a red diamond over here, and then I'll just go to the scene view, change it to 2D, and I'll drag them down so they're appearing underneath the player. Then I'll go to the add a component, add a particle system, and I'll scroll down to the renderer. I'll assign a material, and in this case, I will just use the default particle, which is this one here. And immediately we can't see them, so again, we have to go down to the sorting layers and make sure they're on the right layer, which is game. And the order and layer is four. I know this from the dust particles, which are also on layer four. So there we go. And now we need to start thinking about the shape we want these to appear in, as well as their emission. Let's handle a mission first, because we don't want the, these to have any rate over time as these are going to be a burst, so I'm just going to set this to zero. Next, I'll click the plus button under bursts, and we'll just leave it at a count of 30 for now. So basically it's saying here that every 5 seconds it's going to emit a burst of 30 particles. Ultimately we don't want these to loop, but for testing I think it's helpful, so I'm just going to leave looping on for now, but change the duration to 2, and then maybe change their start lifetime to 1, so this way we can get some constant bursts every couple of seconds, just so it's easier to see what's going on. Let's go under shape next and choose a shape that we want. Because we're using a perspective camera, we can't really use a cone too efficiently because they're going off into the distance. In this case, there's a couple of different shapes that might work for our purposes. And you can probably use either of this. We could use a circle. And the circle does spread them out nicely in only two dimensions, even if we're using a perspective camera. And in this case, I'm also just going to change their speed to zero. That's here under start speed. So I want them to just kind of appear in one place. So that can work. Um, for this reason, though, we can also use a rectangle. A rectangle would put them into, uh, it would move them. So if I was to set this to like three, we can see they're going to shoot into the background. But because I want them to just stay in one place, I'm really just choosing this because I like, think I'd like the shape of a rectangle better for this particular effect. I'm also going to scale it down in its Y. Uh, scale, so I just want them to appear kind of like that as a little cloud underneath the player. Already that kind of looks like what I want it to go for, but obviously I don't want it to just appear and then disappear. So let's also add a color over lifetime. I'll change the start alpha to zero and the end alpha to zero, and then I'll add a couple of different positions in the middle. So basically I want it to fade in and out like that. I think it's also too bright, so I'm going to make the particles more grayish. And yeah, something maybe, maybe a little lighter than that. This is just has to do with experimenting and finding something that works right now. Leave it like that for now. And size over lifetime. Uh, I'm going to click on this. I'm going to drag my particle system curves up. And I'm going to add... Well, actually, I'm going to add a downward slope, but I don't think I'm going to want them to completely fade out to be very small, so I'm going to raise the end position up. I may also lower the starting position and change the handle shape so we go upwards. So I kind of want them to start small, get bigger in the middle, and then shrink down again. That's kind of the effect that I have in mind for myself. And with that, it's looking okay-ish. I'm going to also go up here and I'm going to change the start size. I think I want them to be a random between two constants and maybe make them have be a little bigger. Ah, uh, that might be too big. Be one to one and a half. Okay, that looks a little better just to give it some randomness in there. 
and they're lasting a little too long for my liking as well so I'll change their start lifetime to maybe 0.25 to 0.5 so just a very quick effect maybe one to th one to three for the start size and they're just too opaque so I'm just going to lower their overall color to be much lower in the alpha and there that's kind of looking a lot better that's looking a lot more cloudy of course most of this is just a matter of preference so you can find an effect that works for you if you don't want to use exactly what I'm setting up here I'm sure if you spend time with it you could come up with something that looks a lot better one final thing I'm going to do though is change the simulation space from local to world so that they don't follow the player around as the player moves they'll just appear and then disappear with that I'm also going to disable play on awake so they don't immediately appear as soon as the game starts and at this point I think we can just disable looping because we'll determine through code when these particles are going to play with that we can go into our player jump script at the top here we'll create a new serialized field private particle system and we'll call this double jump particles then we'll just scroll down to our double jump method here and anywhere within here we can just say double jump particles dot play we don't really have to do anything other than that making these particles play correctly is a lot simpler than the dust particles okay oh and i should hook them up first so let's just go into the jump script and drag those on and test again okay there we go there's our double jump particle effect i think that is looking pretty good for these purposes so there we have it now i want to add some dust particles that will just play in the background to do this i'll go into the main camera right click make a new game object and call this dust particles then i'll go to add component add a particle system and we'll go to the renderer i think in this case we can get away with just using the default particle so i'll set that up and then i'll go to the sorting layer id set this to the game layer and not sure if i want them to go behind the terrain or in front of it i think for now i'm going to say that i actually want them to go behind it so for now i'll just leave the order and layer at zero let's go to the game view so we can get a better idea of what's going on and first of all you can see that they're just shooting off into the background of course this is because we're using a perspective camera and we're using a cone particle emitter so basically that's exactly what they're doing they're shooting off into the background I'm going to change this to a rectangle and then I'm going to just expand its X and Y values to maybe be 15 by 15. So I want it to more or less take up the whole screen. And it looks like it might be pretty good. Now of course I don't want it to be shooting into the background. So I'm going to change its speed to zero because I just want them to be at a constant position. If I go to the scene view, I can see that they're appearing actually right at the same level as the camera, so you can't see them. So I do have to just move them a little bit in front of the camera so they actually appear properly. And right now I want them to appear basically at the same level as my player, so I can just physically drag them so they're just behind where the player is. Uh, my player is at position zero over here, but I want them to follow the camera around, so that should be pretty good okay now it's just a matter of sizing them and making them move appropriately so the sizing is way too big let's change this to a random between two constants and maybe make them 0.1 to 0.2 there we go that's a lot more dusty looking uh, as for their color maybe we'll pick a nice yellow that they can appear and we can also make this a random between two colors or possibly even a random between two gradients maybe a nice yellow and then a nice oranges color which sort of match with the background we don't want them to just appear and then disappear like this so i'm going to again go to color over lifetime and make sure that they sort of fade in and fade out like that 
And then I'm not going to deal with size over lifetime directly because we're actually going to handle its sizing with some noise. To do this, I'm going to go over here under noise, check this box, and you can see that immediately they just start moving around very randomly. That's great, but it's a little too strong. So I'm going to lower the strength to say 0.15. So they have a little bit of movement. And then we can also increase the size randomness. So they are going to get a little bit bigger and smaller over their lifetime. And we can also play around perhaps with the frequency. And there we go. That's looking okay-ish. Again, there isn't really any right or wrong here. It's just a matter of experimenting and finding something that's going to make sense for you and that you think looks good. Because I don't want these to follow the camera around, I am going to go up here and change the simulation space from local to world. And that means as we move, the particles will stay where they spawned. And I think that might be good. Uh, I am going to leave looping on and play with awake. And we can just go ahead and give that a try. Let's see. So we have them appearing here. And yeah, I think that looks pretty decent. And whenever we move somewhere new, they do appear. What I might want to do, though, however, is just increase the size of the emitter and the amount of particles that appear because as we move into a new area it looks like there aren't any there yet so to do this i can just make the x and y bigger so they're spawning over a wider area so maybe say something like 30 and 30 and then i could also increase the emission rate to compensate for the fact that they have more area to spawn over try that again Yeah, and now they kind of already exist when I move to a new area. As a final thing, I can also turn on pre-warm, which just means that when the game starts, they will already be in place. So the game is started, and there's already particles there. So yeah, that is looking pretty nice. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how we can randomly draw some decorations onto our tile map and how we can also randomly draw some trees onto our tile map too. It's a very cool one, so stay tuned and see you there.